I've been with the Forest Service for over 31 years, and I still love getting up in the morning and coming to work. I got into the Forest Service because it was a summer job to get through college, and I fell in love with it. The people that live here and the values they have are just so interconnected with my own. It's been wonderful. The Caldwell National Forest has been here since 1907. It's about 1.1 million acres across three counties, and the mission of the agency has always been and continues to be today, sustaining the health, diversity, and productivity of our national forests and grasslands for the benefit of all. We've had uh, increased fire activity on the forest. Fire's pretty scary. People die, people lose homes. To have this kind of a stand uh, in August when all the other forests in the West already have fires going and all the resources, that's not a good time to have a fire. The forest is unhealthy. There's a lot of fuel out there. Every lightning storm that comes through, it's like, oh my God, I hope it's not over Mill Creek or over on the Pondre County. In order to sustain the health of the forest, we need to thin them. So what we want to do is set this forest up so that when the fire does occur, it's not uncharacteristic. It'll stay on the ground. It'll burn some of the smaller trees. It'll burn some of the vegetation. It'll be a real mixed severity fire. The call bill gets an allocation to do a set amount of work. And it's up to the forest to get as much as we can with the money we get. We can use stewardship authority. The stewardship contracting, what it does is it allows you to take the value of the timber and exchange it for that forest treatments. With our current allocation on the call bill, we're able to treat approximately 1%. That doesn't create a sustainable forest. And so what we needed to do is find ways to increase that, right? 5% is pretty good. 5% of, a, of uh, a treatment averaging over a year puts you on a 20-year rotation. That's pretty good business. So we worked really hard. We, we made sausage trying to figure out how were we going to get from 1% to 5%. Uh, there's so much work to do. Uh, we have approximately 700,000 acres of suitable land base where this activity would be appropriate. This activity being uh, commercially thinning our forest. We we're doing all kinds of things that we had had the leeway to do, but it still wasn't enough. It was frustrating the hell out of everybody. We weren't accomplishing the mission. So we had to find ways to do it differently. I work for the Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers and my job is everything that deals with agriculture and natural resources. Ever since Congresswoman's been in office, we've tried to get more productivity, economic productivity, and more forest restoration to end this cycle of building up the forest only to have it burn. I went to DC and kind of ran this around and ultimately the answer was the only way we're gonna get this done is with private dollars. I had never heard of or experienced a contract that incorporated the National Environmental Policy Act. That's an out-of-pocket expense by the contractor. The Congresswoman had conversations with the agency at the Washington office. That trickled down to the regional office, trickled down to the forest, and said, we want you to try this pilot. The basic philosophy of the model is the contractor is responsible for the cost of the National Environmental Policy Act. The work to prepare for the implementation, doing the pre-commercial thing, the gamut of work from A to Z. That's the difference. What they get out of it is the timber. Fortunately, we had enough, let's try this people, uh, to move it forward. And so it, it didn't take an act of Congress. It didn't take any legislation. 
I thought this could be it. This could be what takes us there. So we put that out on the street. Boggan Brothers put in a proposal. We accepted their proposal and awarded the contract. It was several million dollars without anything in return. A to Z was a risk I thought we had to take if we're gonna prove the economics of this whole thing. So the contractor has no money from the value of that timber in his pocket when he sets out to do that planning piece. Restoration is, is critical. We don't have to let this forest go to hell in a handbasket. We can fix it. The biggest concern we had out of DC was it's just gonna be litigated and you won't ever get anything done anyway. We were litigated by the Alliance of the Wild Rockies. Northeast Washington Forestry Coalition filed intervener status. American Forest Resource Council uh, provided their attorney. The judges uh, looked at the, the file and cited on the collaborative approach. It was just that clean. The fact that we had the collaborative group that had been in place for, I think, eight years at the time, that was what gave us the chance that we thought we could be successful on something that was relatively innovative. The Northeast Washington Forestry Coalition is considered you know, one of the most successful collaboratives in the entire U.S. Around 2003, both industry and conservation came together on the foundation that we all love this forest. We all have that in common. The conservation groups, they want to see this restored. You know, they want to sustain it for the future, and so does the industry. This was uncharted territory for them to say, okay, we're going to stop fighting in the courts and actually sit down around the table and, and talk and understand each other's perspective on the national forest. So when that idea first came forward that we could do better with a private-public partnership for the Colville National Forest, you know what? It wasn't the collaborative that was suing it in court, right? Those that were closest to it supported this project and continue to support this project. The reason for the name A to Z, the contractor, us in this case, does everything from the very beginning, scoping, public participation, through writing the draft, doing all the NEPA work, pre-sale, all the treatments, all the road work, all the restoration work, and even the uh, fuels treatment. When we structured the agreement, we set up this arm's length relationship. So our third party NEPA contractor worked with the Forest Service. We paid the bills, but we didn't have any interface at all. We're doing everything from pre-commercial thinning, which is no commercial harvest. Uh, we're logging on steep slopes where conventional ground systems aren't usable, so we're using uh, yarders, cable machines. And then we're doing helicopter work where, there, where, where there's visual concerns or the access is not available. Now, of course, a lot of conventional logging. And then uh, we're trying some innovative systems like tethered cut to length. As we evolve, we want to do something that everybody's comfortable with, that looks good, that meets uh, everybody's objectives, because we live in these forests, we recreate here, and they're critical to us. We want them to be healthy. It's great to be here today with everyone that's been a part of uh, making this happen. What we're going to do is drive pretty slow and do a road tour. I think the big message here is the thinning, and uh, what we hear from people even opposed to this project was we didn't thin enough. Having a healthy forest, that's what brings people together. But it takes the tenacity, like with the Congresswoman and, and Mike, and uh, folks on our team, and the business interests like the Vagans, and the uh, conservation and recreation community. It, it takes them sticking together. And Northeast Washington, I'm very proud to say, is the gold standard. As you're looking at what's been done, you will see the accumulation of slash. Um, it's hard to keep up with. 
but we have more slash on the ground as a result of a larger footprint. And so you're gonna see that out here. And it, it just know it takes time uh, to get in and treat those fuels. We gotta get to the table and figure out how to solve this together. In all our projects, we try to look at the whole, whole landscape. Um, I would like to think we're past the point of looking at forest stands independent of one another because they're all interconnected. As part of NUFIC, we support this project. You know, a couple of the members of the group might have reservations. They didn't do a landscape evaluation. It's not something that's required. It's something that can tell us a lot of really good information about the project area. We don't necessarily know if we're creating resiliency without doing landscape evaluation. We're still having conversation with our forestry coalition regarding how do we do landscape analysis to, to, that leads us to that determination. There's a lot of different ways to do it and right now. We're somewhat in disagreement on what the, what the most effective, efficient way to do that. This is definitely a, a good start in the process. You know, we had some aquatic restoration. We have lots of culvert replacement. It wasn't perfect. We learned a lot. We will take what we learned and we'll incorporate it into the next project and that project won't be perfect, but it will be successful. This is the first one that has ever been done in the country like this. And we're working on other projects now. We have A to Z 2.0 at a different area just south of here, and there we are going to do a landscape evaluation. There we are going to assess the pattern. And so we're learning from these steps, and we're making sure we're doing it better next time. It's pretty exciting what we're doing, using the A to Z model we can sustain the health of our forests. There needs to be certain pieces in the formula to make it work. You know, there's not a Dwayne Boggan in every community. He's, he's not afraid to take some risk. And you need to have the infrastructure. We are so blessed with the infrastructure, we, the milling infrastructure we have here. That's not true everywhere. A to Z was a true public-private partnership of uh, innovation, and some risk taking and a lot of learning. And if we don't change our model of how we do business, we're never going to be able to improve the conditions of our forest. Why don't we fix the forest, get at the forest health, employ a lot of people, create more value, and everybody can benefit. It was huge for the call bill to go from 1% to 5%. Now that we're 5%, our employees are thriving in that environment. They see the changes. We take great pride when the regional office calls and says, the region needs to get more of this type of work done. Can you do it? They know we'll say yes, and they know we'll get it done. <laughs>